Hunter x Hunter, Season 1, Episode 2. I was wondering about this the first time. I thought maybe it was a, like a magical term specific to this universe, but maybe not. Maybe it's just at face value. The unknown has magic. Man, that's true. I, actually, that hits on some of the feelings I had about episode one and what I was saying about destiny and the call. Like it's unknown, but there's two parts of that equation. One is what's out there and one is what's you. And the adventure is the meaning of the two. But the drive is internal. Yo, my second favorite drunk captain. Test X of X tests. <laughs> what happens to everyone else? They just go back home? Here's this flask of whiskey. Okay, the advice is probably better. Rest easy? Uh-oh. say this is giving me Avatar vibes. One key way is something that I, I always love. It's one of my favorite plot devices. This concept of traveling the world, going from town to town, is one of the most exhilarating things I can think of. A feeling I attribute to early experiences playing old RPGs where there was a world map, and I'm so fortunate in that that has largely become my life, though I'm traveling by less exotic means than some of these characters. It's mostly just airplanes, as opposed to wooden sailboats with drunk sailors. Maybe that's what I've been missing. One thing I actually think is missing that the characters have the benefit of that makes it so exciting is a concrete end goal. Travel is not the, the point, it's the means to the end, but that makes the travel all the more interesting and exciting. I think the three elements of a great adventure are unknown, as the show stated, a desired goal, and difficulty or danger. Those occupy the same category. I think you need at least two out of three for a good adventure, and you need all three for a great adventure. What's interesting is that people talk about traveling, but traveling itself is not really that interesting, at least to me. The simple act of getting on a plane or a boat and going to a new country by itself actually can be kind of empty and draining. There almost has to be that that unknown, kind of, like the, the magic that's pulling you, where there's an answer there somewhere to a question that you have, or like some kind of treasure, even if it's not gold. Something to be gained, probably through challenge, because things gained without challenge often end up feeling hollow. There's always some kind of monster guarding the treasure, right? And you might make the case that the treasure is actually defeating the monster because of what that does or what it unlocks for you. Alcoholics never lie. Maybe this is stage two of the, the exam. Everything's a test. Oh, he's already attached. <laughs> he already doesn't want going to leave. Gon is just Mr. Independent over here. He's just got that leadership. Big doubt. <laughs> I was lucky. They do not care. Huh? <laughs> Goodbye. What is this, a fortune teller? Yes, we're all very excited. Okay, it's a very elaborate exam. I'm actually nervous. Or she's just bored and just, she just lingers here. I reject your your binary answer choice. Oh no, he knew. <laughs> Horn really really punctuated. I reject your, your binary outcomes. Oh, Oh, cold-blooded. I don't think that's what they're looking for. <laughs> huh? I'm with real Leo. I mean, what are they going to do if you charge them? Honk a horn at you? Oh yeah, it's an exam. Does this lady have any credentials? Like, how do we... I don't know. I just feel like she's lonely. Some people just like to talk, you know? Seeing a parallel with the first question. No, I sacrificed myself. <laughs> Solve this with sticks. 
There you go, that's more like it. Smasher. Okay, good, I feel so validated. Yes. Yes. <laughs> May have overreacted a little bit there, but heart was in the right place. God, there's like an exam every five steps. Probably fewer hunters in this universe than there are surviving demon slayers or survey course scouts. But yeah, don't let people put you into binary choices. Don't let yourself put yourself in binary options for that matter. There's always an option C. If two options feel terrible, the question is not which option. The question is what's option C. I feel like there's always a bigger path. It just might be more difficult. By the way, speaking of loss of power, this is, I think, a, a tactic I've heard that makes some intuitive sense. If you want someone to say yes to something, you don't ask them to do something. You ask them, would you rather this or this? Similarly, there's a sales tactic you learn as a stockbroker where before you get to the real question, where you want a, a yes, you ask a lot of questions for which the answer is definitely going to be yes. For example, if you give me a chance and I make you money, you'd be willing to consider a continued relationship. Am I right? What that does is it gets people in a habit of saying yes and it, it like primes them for the most important yes. I mean, sales is maybe the least of it. False dichotomies abound in discourse. Like the, the idea that you either believe this or you believe this. You're on this side, or you're on that side. Often, if you fall into those traps, you're you're not playing your own game. You're playing someone else's game. It's a little bit annoying, I guess, and people have, get their feathers ruffled when you answer this way but in a, in a question on complex issues that goes something like do you believe x or not or do you believe x or y almost always the appropriate answer is it depends on what you mean by x and y or which element specifically of x or y for that matter what do you mean by support you know like it's frustrating for me when people try to put me into neat categories because they're trying to sort me into how they deal with me. It's like, no, I'm going to represent myself as I want to represent myself as I feel I am. No, I don't want to play your game. I would much rather grab a piece of wood off the side of this alley and smash your little makeshift musical shack. But for real, I probably choose my mom because <laughs> I can't replace my mom. <laughs> Where have you been? I mean, there is an answer that is not evil. It's, I would choose my mom because I don't have a lover. You don't think that way, you just try to say both. Oh no, is this foreshadowing? Is this foreshadowing? Oh no, oh no, oh no. At least we'll have a lover though, if it's direct foreshadowing. Oh, <laughs> wow, okay, hidden motive here. Can we get a honk squeak, a horn squeak for good measure? Yeah, that is true. Kurapika, or I'm just kind of struggling with the name. Also, I think I mistook this character for a girl. Quiz later referred to her as the cat-eyed boy. Because I wanted to get it straight, I cheated and looked it up and was very happy to find that apparently a lot of people make that mistake. Not just me. <laughs> I don't know what's so funny about that. The voice acting, they plus. Did you not see the intro? There's like literal Dragon Ball dinosaurs. Oh. I mean, you're in the woods. Is it really an adventure if you're not taking a dump in the woods? Oh, this is another test. We got another mission. Oh, you failed just barging into someone's house at night. Oh, they're dead. Are you sure, Gon? Some of us have made mistakes. Has Gon ever faced a, a monster? He got that big fish, but what is he gonna do when he catches it? He's gonna like hit it with his fishing rod? He has legit ha hops though. He actually is just gonna hit him with his fishing rod. <laughs> Gon has such a presence that this monster like destroyed two adult humans, but is fleeing from a child. It looked like Leo Leo was like hitting him with some morphine or adrenaline or something that he just carried in his suitcase for some reason. Why did you have those? Oh, it got me. Damn it! I have such a long history of getting fooled in this channel. Oh, 
homunculus flashbacks. God, this is becoming like an insecurity. <laughs> like this is this is disturbing how I fall for this every time. I think in all the channel's history of doppelgangers, I've gotten it right once. Why? Why? It should have been so obvious from the time she said it can take human form and we hadn't even seen this human form yet. Definitely failed this round of the exam. Oh, okay. And parts of the Caribbean again. This kid just has no fear whatsoever. Kind of looks like crack Pikachu. More than one. None of this changes the fact that Gomu's about to get clawed in the face. No, honestly. Are we just gonna like chill here after like they nearly killed the husband? What? Wow. <laughs> this is- wow. Wow. This is a terribly designed part of the exam. So many things kind of could have gone wrong. Wait, did he get injected with painkiller despite not being injured? The drugs were just a bonus. You supplied us with drugs, so you also pass. He definitely had a syringe. And Gon, you are just crazy and a danger to yourself and everyone around you. Never in my life have I seen such wanton disregard for human life, especially your own. <laughs> Alright, of course, the classic, the exam to take the exam. This looks highly uncomfortable. Yeah. Wow. Who designed this? Whatever professor made this exam needs to be stopped. He's just a menace. We're like testing for absolute insanity here. Well, I don't get seasick. I saw right through the, the binary choice quiz. Totally fell for the doppelganger though. As always, am I unworthy of being a hunter? We'll find out.